Okay, the next one's going to be a, a parachute, rusty. You can call it a spinner, you can call it a dun. We'll just call it a parachute. So, setting the tails. Everybody worries about making the tails nice. There's a couple little tricks. I like to use either one of two materials for the tail on the Hendrickson. It's either the micro fibits or mayfly tails, they're calling them these days. Or I like to use uh, Coq de Leon, which is a type of chicken that's got some nice speckling to the, to the fibers. What's nice with this is it's very stiff, easy to work with. It's got a natural, like I said, a speckling. So what I do is I just stroke this fiber out to the side. Makes it really easy to locate three. Hendrickson's have three tails. I'm convinced trout can't count, so don't worry. So you get your three, and we're just going to make them the same length as the hook shank. You can make them a little longer. Spinner has longer tails than the dun. So if you want this to imitate a spinner, make the tails longer. So we're just going to leave them pretty much just in a bunch. Sitting back there, we're going to tie them in, lash them down nicely. And I'm just going to tell you my, my deal for tails. I put my fingernail under it, I pull one left, leave one center, and leave one right. And we're all done. We don't have to worry about this figure eight around tails, dubbing balls, all that hoopla, because if you are very diligent when you go to fish, you're going to look at your fly pattern before you cast it and say, all right, I want my tail set nicely. And you just stick your fingernail under this thing, push on it, and set them where you want. They're going to stay pretty spread out nicely. Not going to have to worry about it. So if we were to make this to be a spinner, you put three in. Because this one I wrote up as a done, I'm going to pull these out and we're going to just tie in a pile of them. And a pile is going to be like six. So you get your six fibers. I didn't count. Measure them the length of the tail or the length of the, the hook shank. Trade hands. Put your thread back where it's supposed to be at the back of the hook. Tie them in. So if you wanted it to emulate a spinner, you'd put three in there and spread them. If you want it to be a done, I tie in just a bunch. And when I go to fish this thing, I just kind of spread them out. And the reason I spread them is just to distribute the weight of the hook shank on the water so it fishes nicely. So we got our tails in there. Get out of there. There we go. All right, tails are in. So the rusty spinner, rusty done, any of the quill type flies you hear about, always use a material of uh, hackle stalk for the body, goose by it or turkey by it. I brought some different materials for you guys to play with. I tend to like what I'll talk about after this called uh, peacock curl, but you'll see written a lot is about turkey biots. And a turkey biot's off the lead wing flight feather, and we're using these, these long quills. And the way to deal with these is you just grab one. I can never get one here. There we go. You just grab one and you actually tear it off. And what you look for is there's this little notch. And the can notch you, will... Let me hand over your, your off the, yeah, because you, you can't see it from the film. Yeah. I'll show you in person. Here we go. We got a quill. Okay. We're going to just grab them at a right angle and pull down. And that leaves this notch. And what you use the notch for is the gauge, either tying it in, notch up, or tying it in, notch down. What happens is you'll see two different types of, of body come out of this one quill. If you have the notch up, you're going to see a very uniform flat body. Notch down, you're going to see that quill have this little tiny fuzzy edge stand up. A lot of times for spinners, guys like the fuzzy edge. I tend to make all my bodies flat and very streamlined. And personally, I don't, I don't use this that much. Turkey biots, I'll, I'll uh, save for doing duns a lot of the time, or I use them where I can't get the right color in a, in a peacock curl. So, peacock curl. 
you'll notice that these guys are a little strange looking. They've been dyed orange. What the hell would we do with orange if the fly's not orange? But what's really cool is we're going to pull off a quill. We're going to stroke it down and get all the fuzzies pointing in, you know, in out, outward direction. We're going to take our fingernail. We're just going to stroke this thing. We're going to take off all the fuzz. Fuzz is useless. We don't want the fuzz. We want a nice bare quill. I don't know. Can you see that? Maybe, maybe not. Anyhow, we're going to use this for a body material. And the neat thing about dyeing a peacock quill naturally is it leaves it very supple. It's, it's not been bleached. What I did was I bleached out some of these guys, and I'm just going to pass around a handful. You're going to feel how dry they are. We soak this guy in water. To protect it, we're going to have to put something over it, such as I like Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. I brought some bottles of uh, this hard head stuff. Same product, just in a fly tires bottle. You're going to put it over the quill. And if the quill has some kind of moisture in it, the moisture wants to get out. So once you put that glue on there, it's going to turn white. And it's going to piss you off. It's going to make you crazy because you're going to tie all these flies, coat them with glue, wake up the next morning, and you got white Hendersons. Save them for your, for your uh, you know, uh, white fly hatch or your Cahill hatch because it's sure not going to catch a fish during the Hendrickson hatch. So with that in mind, forget soaking them. Forget bleaching these things till they're all dried out and half dead. Take the live, live thing right off the quill, dyed orange. I brought a whole bunch. Everybody take some and use it for your Hendrickson. So what you look for is you can actually feel the width of these fibers. So if you feel that there's no quill there, don't strip it. Come up near the eye and you'll feel the width is in these guys. So you're just going to peel off a couple. I like to strip them one at a time. Grab it with your fingernail. It's going to break at the tip pretty darn often. But we're not going to need much more than that. So we're going to strip out, say, two or three. And I've treat, cheated. I've got a whole bunch stripped out. So I'm just going to grab three of those, save a little time. So I got three quills. And you're probably going to ask, well, geez, we only got to make the body with one. Well, chances are that you break one wrapping it pretty good. Chances are that the body doesn't taper with one quill, extremely good. Chance that it's not going to look like a mayfly because you're not going to get a carrot shape to the body. So I like to get myself three of these. Essentially, I really only want to wrap two of them, but I'm guaranteed I'm going to break one. I guarantee you. All right, so we got three quills. Strip nice, nice and flat. If I can find my scissors in here somewhere. Camouflage, can't see them, trout skin. All right, trim those bad boys out. So we got lots of quill going on, plenty for what we're going to do. Tie three in. Go up here where you're going to put your post. Wrap these bad boys back. You're going to get to the point where your tails are. So grab everything, tails, quills, and just wrap it back to the back of the hook. Some guys like to put a wrap behind, that's fine. You can pick them up, give them a wrap behind. It's going to set your wings up, or your tails up for a little bit of a fan look. Not a big deal. There we go. I like to leave everything just hanging out because I want to make sure that my post is in the right place. If I run my body and I go too long, I crowd the post. If I run it too short, body doesn't end in the right place. So we're going to work with a little... A little bit of turkey again. And this one I'm running out of material, so I'll just clip his tip out and cheat. You can take these guys, clip the tip out, just grab them, fold them, and you'll see a post form. What stinks about using that kind of technique is you wasted all the side feather. That's why I tend to use that up first, and then every third or fourth fly you get a bonus one. It's easier. As you grab the tip, pull it. You got a nice post ready to go. Measure them up to the shank. I'm blinder in the bat, so I'll make the thing a little bit long. I never catch a squat anyway, so it doesn't matter. Tie them in. I like to cut them in a nice tight angle. That way we're not worrying about crowding the body. You're not going to see a big step up there. So we got our wing in the right place. 
gives us enough room up front to tie off if we need to, which we're going to after we do our hackle, so we just let him sit. All right, here comes the funnel. Place your thread right at the back of the wing. You can wrap these guys individually. You can wrap them two at a time. Tonight we're pressed for time, so we're going to wrap all three at once. And we're just going to come up the body nice and neat. And you'll hear every once in a while I hit the hook point. That's why I tie in three. Because I'm usually pretty bad. And I'll nick one. All right, we're getting close to finishing. There we go. Tie them off. Usually three good wraps. Clip out the, the quills. All right, so now we're at the back of the wing post. We're going to grab the wing post like we did before and put a couple in front of it, about three, maybe four. Stand them up. Looks pretty good. I like to rotate the vise toward me. You don't have to. You come up over the top, grab your post. And I tend to wrap at the bottom first to get things tight. And then you come up. I'm terrible at doing it this way. I apologize. I'm going to wrap it toward me. It's a lot easier to manage the tension when your wing post is pointing at you. So you're going to come up the post enough to get ah four to six wraps of hackle. Go back down your post. A couple in front to finish it off. Look at the magic. You say, all right. That looks good to me. It's pointing up. Quills in. Good to go. We go back behind. And I just like to go to the point where you can see the taper from your wing post start to come down to your shank. And that's where we're going to put some dubbing. So dubbing on this one, you can use you know, a rusty orange, you can use more of a subtle brown, or you can use a dark mahogany. All depends on what you like. This one's handy, I'll grab that one. So again with dubbing, I noticed a lot of you guys were struggling a little bit. And the magic with dubbing is use a heck of a lot less than you really want. So you just grab a little bit and you say to yourself, oh man. That's not going to be enough. And you just work it on there. And as Carmona found out, you really have to be sparse. So you got them going. Get your body ready to go. All right, back a couple times and then come forward. And you're going to stop. And I'd rather add dubbing. The hard part is when you get this stuff on there to pull it off, I mean, it takes forever. To so just get this little tiny bit of dubbing off of there is an effort. So put on a lot less than you think you really need because it's way easier to add. So you're adding. Come up to your post. I'm still short. So you just put on a little bit. And this might seem like a real anal step, but I'm telling you, you put so much dubbing on here, the body gets fat, things get crowded, you get frustrated. You don't want to tie this dry fly anymore. So you don't want to do that, so I just, you got me. Thank God we got a few more. So you're going to pick one, and on, on this guy we're tying like a 12. So I tend to try to get a 12 to a 14 hackle. Definitely not a 10. And what I'm doing is I'm just measuring it on this, this hackle gauge. You can do the same thing by taking your post, taking a look at it, and say, holy jeez, those hackles touch my tails. They're too long. So you just keep searching for a feather that works. And unfortunately, this cape has got more big feathers than small, which is a rarity today because the breeders have, have designed their, their chickens to tie very, very small flies. But to get a 12 or a 10 hackle today is uh, pretty rare. So if you find a cape that has, or a saddle that has 12s and 10s on it, you got yourself a pretty rare feather cape. So what we got now is about a size, uh, let's just check, it's about 12, good enough. A lot of times you'll find your hackles have this funky twist at the bottom. I'm as cheap as they come, but I'll still throw that out because it makes a very nightmarish hackle when you go to wind it. It just gets frustrating. So get yourself the zipper going. That way when you tie them in, it doesn't slide out. 
time in in front of the the wing post. About three wraps usually keeps them pretty darn good. So we're good to go. And like I said, I like to finish up my dubbing work before I go to wrap the hackle. So I'll cover up my tie in a bit. Twist on a little more dubbing. Lift the hackle, one behind. Come in front and just fix up the work that we've done. There we go. Good to go. Always look at your post to make sure he's not off to the side. That one's looking okay. So now pull your hackle up. So you start your hackle at the very tallest point of that wing where we've finished up our threat. So the first one starts tall. And we're going to make consecutive wraps going down toward the bottom of the post. We've got one more. And Jim had asked, you know, how much hackle do I put on here? And it depends on what I'm making the fly for. Like the Batten Kill is a very placid river. It's semi-slow, and the Hendrickson's like to pile up in the back eddies in high water, hang out near the riffles and fast, you know, lower flows. I tend to put three or four hackle wraps on here for low water, four or five, maybe six for high water. So if you're trying to pack hackle in here, grab your hackle, pull it up, and you can actually place a wrap or two under all this. And that just gives you an extra, you know, turn or two. So again, we're pulling out this hackle nice and tight. I just screwed up there. But got them tight. I'm going to come up over the top of them. And remember, there's not much tension on this bobbin. We're trying to weave this stupid thread through those crazy fibers. So once you got it through, if you dare, let go. Try them again. Nice and light. Get them in. Good to go. Grab the whole mass of stuff. Get it out of your way. One, two, three. Thank God for six aught thread because I hit the point again. And that tends to cut it. So I'm pretty confident things are nice and tight. I give it a pull. Okay, good. Clip out the stock. Good. Again, grab all the stuff. And you can take your finger and push it toward the back going counterclockwise. And it moves everything out of the hook eye. Three wraps. Find yourself a whip finisher if you got one. Get them under your fibers. Give them a pull. Okay. We're at the end of the fly. We take a look at them and we say, all right, not so bad. Looks like hell as usual. Pull them around, <laughs> make them look pretty. Thank God fish don't vote to give us a six. <coughs> you say to yourself, all right, you know, Sean mentioned they got to do something with these tails. Well, that's, that's kind of the setting your fly up for success. Just take your fingernail, push it under the tails. Look at that. Nice and set, sideways. Yummy. Fish think that looks like. That looks like uh, good stuff. What I didn't talk about, and I always do this you know, at a later time, I tie up all my patterns. I hate playing with glue because I'm terrible with it. But what you got to do with this fly, and it, it sucks, but you have to do it because you'll catch one fish and she'll be done. Is you get some kind of head cement. I like using Sally hands as hard as nails. Just come in here and put a dab in your, in your body. If I had a oh, if I had a dubbing needle, I'd use it, but I don't. It's in here somewhere. But just take your dubbing needle, flatten out your your glue, and that'll protect the quill. It look like a mayfly. Well, I don't have any problem with trimming it. Voila! Pointed fish don't really see it, in my opinion. I don't know if they really do, but I don't ever have a trout go like this. Ah, I need it. You know, he says ah, so. If your belly looks good, flies good. Wings for us. So that's what we have for a quill parachute type fly. And using peacock curl, trust me, it's, it's so much easier. I'm, I'm severely disliked.